Hey, my name is Rini Gito. I'm with Symmetry Web Studio. We're a small web design company based out of Austin, Texas. And uh, we decided to start a YouTube channel to give knowledge on web design, logo design, photography, videography, basically all the stuff that we love doing just because we like sharing that knowledge with other people. We're gonna be reviewing one of my most favorite business investments of all time, and that is the Sony a7 III. We've been using it for about two years now. And we thought it'd be a perfect time to review this camera because Sony just released a ton of cameras this year alone. Not just Sony, but like Canon, everybody. And um, so there's a lot of hype around the new cameras and I kind of want to give everybody a little bit of pause and be like, yo, do not overlook the a7 III because this is a very valuable camera for the price point. We're going to go over the specs, basically just the basic stuff. I know you don't want me to nerd out completely on all this stuff. And then we'll, uh, we'll go out into the field and kind of show you what it does later. And then at the end, we'll give you some of the pros and the cons and wrap it up with the conclusions on why I think the Sony a7 III is the best camera for this price point. Let me give you a few basic specs. It's got a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor. It also has a 693 point autofocus system. It shoots 4K at 30p, which is, you know, amazing. Five years ago, you would have never thought that a camera like, a small mirrorless camera like this could shoot 4K at 30p. I shoot at 24 because it looks more cinematic. Another thing I'd like to bring up is the lenses. So the lenses for this Sony are fantastic. I'm sure you've heard of the G Master series, but those are like the highest end lenses. I unfortunately am a millennial, and so I don't have money or very much of it. So I chose to go with the cheaper third-party lenses. If you're worried about having a limited option of lenses, do not be concerned because with the Sony a7 III, they've got a fantastic series of native lenses and third-party. Everything you see today is going to be shot on a Sony a7 III because we rented one from Precision Camera. Shout out to Precision Camera. Thanks for the sponsorship. Just kidding. We're not sponsored by anyone. <sighs> All right, cool. So I said I was going to show some examples of footage and photos. We're out in Austin in this beautiful community garden with Sam. We're going to shoot some photos on my 85mm 1.4 and we'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> Just like <laughs> Thank you, Sam, for helping out today. No, thank you. We're gonna go back to Paris's apartment to tell you about the pros and cons 
of the Sony a7 III. Really, I have a lot of pros about it. Obviously, the 4K video at 30p max is fantastic. It, you can shoot 1080 at 120 slow-mo as well, and I've gotten away with that on plenty of professional projects. It's a full-frame sensor. Full frame. If I want to just zoom in straight on my face right here, um, it's still going to look pretty sharp and really good. They have an amazing series of lenses, whether it be from Zeiss or from Sigma or the Sony native lenses, especially the G Master series. Some of the best glass in the game right now. The autofocus is fantastic. It's probably never lost me once this entire time that we've been filming, even though I'm waving my arms back and forth, it's still locking onto my face. Uh, high speed shooting. Oh yeah, this thing can shoot like, I think 12 frames per second. If you wanna go out to a sporting event, you know, you're shooting your kid's soccer game or something, picture profiles. So the Sony comes with um, a, an extensive selection of picture profiles that you can shoot on. What I prefer to shoot on is HLG, which is what we're shooting on right now. I'll show you what it looks like graded and ungraded. And also S-Log2, S-Log3. It's only got 8-bit color, but I think 8-bit looks fantastic. Um, unless you're doing some really crazy stuff with the color. The form factor, it is nice and small. It's not too small, you know? Like some cameras, you can't really get a grip. I've never had a problem with holding on to this. Most of the time when I'm shooting, I don't even have my, my, uh, Paris, what's it called? I don't, yes, I don't have my lanyard on most of the time because I'm shooting because I feel so confident holding this thing. You can reach all the buttons with your fingers. Love it. Price. It is, when I bought this camera, it was about two grand for just the body. And then I also bought it with the kit lens that it comes with, which was okay. I think it was like a uh, 24 to 50 or something, 24 to 75, I'll throw up later. And it was a decent kit lens. I would always suggest to buy, you know, third party lenses or some better lenses, cause that's half your game is the camera. The lenses is the other half. All right, so the video is great day and night, like low light, Videography and photography on this camera is fantastic. You can crank that ISO up like as much as you want within reason and you won't have too much artifacts or a lot of grain. The, the camera handles perfectly in low light situations. Yeah, it's just an all around workhorse. For the price of 1600 bucks, which it is right now, I would still buy it at two grand because this is a fantastic camera for that price. If you were to compare similar cameras with the same specs across the board, the Sony a7 III is gonna beat them out, and it's like a two-year-old camera. Cons. All right, so there are a few limitations to this camera system, which is the 4K maxed out at 30p. Say you wanted to get some really, really slow-mo shots of like some cars racing past you or something, you're gonna be a little bit limited by having to downsize to 1080p p to shoot at a higher frame rate at 120. Um, I haven't, I've been able to get away with it in my professional line of work, but that can be a limiting factor for some people and some people really care about that slow-mo shot. Uh, no flippy screen. Yeah, it does come out like this, but you can't really flip it around, see? So if you're really into vlogging and you need to look at yourself to make sure that your hair is on fleek at all times, you're not gonna be able to do that with this camera because you can't flip the screen around. You can end on the a7C and the a7S3. Um, the lenses, all right. So let's talk about this price thing. I know a lot of you are probably saying 1600 bucks is a lot of money and it is, but compared to other camera systems, like that's not much, but it does get expensive when you start buying other lenses. Uh, full frame lenses, in particular are generally pretty expensive. And then when you start buying really good quality lenses like Sigma and um, the Sony native lenses, the price is gonna get a little bit high. We're talking like $1,200. But I mean, you can also try some of the other lenses that aren't so popular like the Tamron 17 to 24, which I think looks great for video. But if, 
you're gonna spend some money on lenses. All right, so who is the Sony a7 III IV? In my opinion, it could be it for a lot of people. Whether you're a hobbyist who likes to do like travel videos or travel photography and have a really good camera system, but not for too much money, um, I think this is a fantastic camera. I've taken this to, not this one, because this is the one I rented, but I've taken the Sony a7 III to Japan, to Guam. It's never failed on me. It's always held up. It's a great travel, and the size. I mean, look, it's tiny. If you're a hobbyist, this is fan a fantastic system. Um, you're gonna get really high quality photos from that 24.2 megapixel system. You're gonna be able to take 4K video wherever you go with IBIS, which I forgot to include in the pros, whatever. The, there is in-body stabilization, and so you're gonna have a pretty still uh, image. It doesn't mean you can just run with it. I mean, you can with a gimbal, but yeah, it does help if you're shooting handheld with that IBIS system. Now, if you're a professional, I think this camera can definitely handle a bunch of professional jobs. I know this because I've done them. I have shot like six or seven videos on the Sony a7 III system, and they all came out fantastic in terms of sharpness, color, um, and the image just looked fantastic to me. So for professional users, definitely a great choice. I know a lot of people who used to shoot weddings with the Sony a7 III, uh, headshots, uh, pretty much any sort of professional media work, I think it handles really well. Personally, I am looking at the Sony a7S III because I, I do want that 10-bit color. It's really groovy that you get all that data to work with, with the colors and post. But um, yeah, dude, it's like $3,600. And so I'm gonna have to save up for that system. Say you're on a tight budget right now, you can't even get the Sony a7S III but there are plenty of Sony a7-3s that are on sale right now for 1600 bucks. So in conclusion, I think this is a fantastic camera for a wide variety of uses. Um, and I love it. I'll probably end up using this camera for uh, the foreseeable future until I save up enough money um, to buy that Sony a7-S3. So whenever I look at a business investment, I always think about what kind of ROI am I getting? Return on investment, right? So I spent like 2,400 bucks on this system uh, initially, and I've definitely made my money back. And moreover, like this camera is fantastic. It served me for all of my professional purposes, for all of my personal purposes where I'm, I'm going out traveling in Japan or, or you know, wherever. It's a great system that's never failed me. It's never frozen, it's never overheated. Looking at you, Canon. So don't jump on that hype train just yet and buy the Sony a7C just because it's new. Some things to consider are, you get one less card slot, which means you can only shoot on one card, and if you're shooting professionally, and you're not shooting on two cards, you're messing up, bud, because if that one memory card fails, you lose all that work that you shot. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, you know, hit the like button, leave a comment on some of your thoughts about some camera systems, or if you wanna call me a Sony fanboy, I'm totally cool with that. Hit the bell for notifications after you sub to us because, you know, we're gonna be releasing content like this on media production, video production, uh, web design, a bunch of stuff that'll be really useful for other creators out there. And um, hopefully we can help you with your business or your aspirations as a content producer with this channel. We'll catch you on the next one.